Hello, hello. It is good to see you all. Just waiting for myself to get on the screen there. There we go. Hi there, everybody. Nice to see you today. Hey there, Aaron. Thanks for saying hi as you enter in and welcome to all of you who are joining us this week. Hard to tell for me how many are here for the first time, how many are coming back. So if you just want to poke in and say hello, let me know if you've been here before. It's wonderful to meet you. I'm here in a wonderful rainy New York today. So we're having some interesting weather. Also already lost power a couple times today. So hopefully we're not going to jump drop out during the stream. And for this stream, I just want to explain, we're going to be doing something a little bit, uh, well, sort of different, but it's actually more returning to our roots. You know, we did a couple of interviews over the last couple of months, and they were well received, a lot of good stuff there with Jess Garcia and Ismail Valenzuela. But today, today we're going to be jumping back to actually doing some live stream coding, which I know that's why some of you come, because you love Dave's Python fails. So that's what we're going to get involved in. So I invite you to participate in that. Feel free to ask questions. And of course, if you see me making a mistake, let me know that too. Also, if you see a way I could do something better, you know, feel free to point that out because there's lots of ways to write things in Python. So hey there, we've got a LinkedIn user. Don't know who you are, but Mahmoud, I recognize your name. I know I've seen you before. Hey there, Byron and Rambul. Good to have you. Let's let's jump in. Let me explain what we're going to do. And I've got it kind of a laid out here already for us, kind of an outline. And we're not going to finish this today. You probably saw this was listed as part one, right? Here's what I want to do. I don't know about you, but I find that when I'm talking to people about machine learning models and TensorFlow models that we've developed, and, and I'm talking to someone who isn't really a data science person, that showing them the, how the model is built maybe just isn't as motivating. Or maybe showing them what TensorFlow produces when you try to print out the model, which is just the boxes with the names of the layers, it just doesn't you know, really have that punch. What I really prefer is that nice layout where I can see maybe the nodes and how the things connect and how things go through the model and maybe even, maybe even colorizing the nodes based on the values of weights or maybe looking at what the colors of the, the links are between the layers based on what the bias is. Those feel like really good things to do and can maybe better illustrate how a model is working. So that's what our goal is. And it's going to probably take us a couple of episodes to do this. And, and I haven't written it yet. It's just been something that's in my mind. So we're going to kind of explore this together. We'll see how far we get today. And then, you know, in the next episode, we'll just pick up. And the goal is that when we're all done, I'm going to publish this out into the GitHub that we've got for, uh, for, this, for this channel. And of course, you're welcome to the package to modify it any way you'd like to or use it to visualize models. So that's kind of where we're going. Hey there, Maury. Moria, Mor, hmm, how do I say that? Moriaba? Tell me, tell me if that's right or not. Moriaba, nice to have you there. Hey there, Joey and Teamer. And also, ooh, mm, mm, I'm wondering if that's really your first name. So Ragava, nice to have you here. All right, so to get started, I, I need to first import a couple of things in. I know for sure I'm gonna vent, I'm gonna be visualizing some TensorFlow models. So it makes sense to me that I'm going to import or well, yeah, import TensorFlow as TF because I may end up needing some stuff that I don't import directly. So using the, the as TF, I can just get anything I need to. And I know for sure that from TensorFlow.keras, I think I'm going to use layers for sure and probably build a sequential model. Now, in the long run, so this is, you know, weeks from now when we're doing this together, I am thinking of building a visualization package that can handle not just dense networks, but also convolutional layers and deconvolutions and can, can dynamically deal with maybe having multiple input feeds or having a network that breaks something out and carries it down or has multiple outputs. But that's the long term. I prefer to start with something simpler. So today, today's going to be kind of an exploration for feeling our way along on how we might do this. And then we're going to try to formalize some of that and abstract it, refactoring it into maybe classes or at the very least into Python packages. So don't expect this to be at a Python package level today. Let's just do some exploration. And to do that, I'm going to need a model. And I feel like I'm just going to do a, a dense network as a sequential model for today 
because that's about the simplest thing we could build. So I know I'll need those. And I actually spent a little bit of time thinking about how I would visualize it. I might at some point go back and, and deal with Matplotlib, but I, I thought about it and thought to myself, you know, if I were to build this with Matplotlib, I would have a tremendous amount of control over how the graphics are rendered. However, with that comes a tremendous amount of work for positioning the nodes and drawing the lines and get everything lined up. And, and, and I thought more about it and realized that there is another package that is probably a better thing to use. Because to start with, I don't really need to dig into how do I draw circles and lines and lay them out in Matplotlib, which isn't hard, but the positioning and spacing, that's going to just add a lot of complication to this. I thought, let me, from GraphViz, import Graph. Because GraphViz, if you haven't run into it, GraphViz is a language for defining graphs, connected things. And I could do this as a digraph or a directed graph, which will have one node connected to with an arrow, another node. Or if I just do a graph, it'll connect the nodes for me without having any arrowhead. So I think I'm going to start there. This also has another great advantage just looking at, hey there, Michelle, nice to have you from Chicago. Where are the rest of you guys, by the way? So I told you I'm in New York. We've got Michelle. I think I recognize some of the names. I know there's one or two from India. Where else are you guys tuning in from today? Anyway, what I was going to say is that another great advantage of GraphViz over Matplotlib is that it is trivial to configure my Python so that it will output an SVG. By putting out a vector graphic, it means that this could be scaled to any size without losing resolution. So it feels like there's some big advantages to doing it that way. Hey, so coming from Fairfax, I used to live in Fairfax, Virginia. Nice to have you there, Aaron. We've got someone from Tampa. I am so looking forward to April. In April, my wife and I are taking a little vacation. We're gonna be somewhere in Florida. I'm not gonna tell you where, but we'll be somewhere. We've got someone from Texas. We've got, hey, Stephen, nice to see you, my friend from Clarksburg, Maryland. Anyway, let's, let's get those imports done. So let me just shift enter on that one. Now, obviously, I have already done the pip install for GraphViz, so that's already here. If you're doing this with me or on your own, you, you'd need to do a pip install for that. And it's, it's super simple. Just a pip install GraphViz is all you need to make that happen. It is not a typical install if you're using something like Anaconda or something, so you would have to add that in. All right. Oh, someone from North Carolina. Nice to have you. I hear the weather down there is getting a little bit rough. I hope you guys are doing okay. And actually, you folks in Pennsylvania, too. My goodness, Kevin. Uh, what's the weather like there today? I mean, we're just getting rain, but it looks like you guys might get dumped on. I hope things work out for you okay. And someone from Long Island. Hi there. Another Long Islander. Uh, anyway, let's build ourselves a model. So just so we have something to work with. Model equals sequential, because I already imported that in. So that'll let me build a sequential model to which I can then add layers. So uh, model that add. I'm all confused because I write these things in lots of different ways. So we're going to use the simpler approach today and just add them in as function calls. So let's do, um, I don't know, let's maybe make four neurons with an input shape of, uh, let's call it uh, eight things that are coming in. Uh, this isn't any particular network because we're not solving a real problem. I just need to have a network to work with. So I don't want to make it crazy. Let's do a relu on that one. That feels good. And let's add a couple more layers in here. Layers, dense, and maybe I'll give it eight with an activation, activation of, um, and I'm going to stick a tan H in there. Not that I plan on using it, but I'll tell you why I'm doing it. I'm just going to copy this and, oops, copy this. There we go. Paste it in a couple times. Because my thought is, I don't have this up in my top piece there, but I feel like as we move forward, it would be cool to think about other things we can do to the visualization. Like right now, maybe, maybe the ReLU, if it's a node that has a ReLU, there's like some icon or something that, that indicates it's a ReLU. Or if it's 10H, it's got a different icon. Or if it's a, if it's a sigmoid, it's got a different icon and, and so on.
Hello, everyone. Looks like we lost Dave for just a second, I'm trying to get him back in studio. Uh, bear with us for just a couple of minutes while we try to get this sorted out. Fun of live stream uh, is that sometimes these things happen. Uh, so bear with us for just a second. Thank you so much for, for holding in. Um, I just got communication from Dave that he is having uh, a power failure. He's in the middle of a power failure and everything is out, including his internet. So we will find some time to resume this live stream uh, in the coming week. Um, we actually have a scheduled stream two Fridays from now on the 18th at noon. And the likelihood is we'll just resume then. So if you could... Um, uh, Michelle, we might have the link for that stream live. Actually, I, I'm going to just point everyone to that stream right now. And if you could, just go ahead and schedule. Um, put this on your calendar, and we'll we'll pick up there uh, in our. I'm going to drop this out to you on LinkedIn and on YouTube. And I'm so sorry about that, but this is one of the things that happens with live every now and then we can um, account for random things that we can't plan for. So uh, here I'm dropping the link right now for you in the live uh, comments section on both LinkedIn and YouTube. Again, sorry about that. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day and your weekend. Cheers.